What is the biggest, most overlooked trigger for CPTSD symptoms? It's one that happens all the time and it's a trigger for a lot of people, not just people with CPTSD. And it is hurrying, hurrying. It's so normal, right? We all do it, we do it all the time. But when you have CPTSD, hurrying very easily turns into overwhelm. And though you probably think, well, it's not possible to live without hurrying and getting overwhelmed, there's so much to do, right? If you're hurrying when you're like doing your job or caring for your kids, it can trip you up and sabotage the most important things in your life because dysregulation, right? I'm Anna Runkle, also known as the Crappy Childhood Fairy, and I gotta say, I think hurrying is a massive trigger that nobody talks about. I have it bad. When I hurry a lot, because I'm always trying to do a little bit more, I bite off more than I can chew, it gets me very, very dysregulated. Now, if you don't know about dysregulation, in a nutshell, this is a sort of a core symptom for adults who had trauma as kids and others. It's Everybody gets dysregulated sometimes. Most people can re-regulate fairly quickly. CPTSD means we get maybe more dysregulated and it's harder to come back. And what it is is, if you do a brain scan, brain waves that normally are sort of operating in sync together are kind of going all over the place. We get triggered by something, something kicks off an emotion, usually it's not even conscious, and things start to get discombobulated there. It can also affect vital signs, it can affect blood flow. It's, it's no joke, it's something that's strongly impacting the central nervous system, which in turn drives all your endocrine system, your immune system, your, your um, heart rate, your breathing, and your digestion, and, and your emotions, and your ability to focus, so it can be very pervasive, the effect of dysregulation. The trick of healing CPTSD is to be able to go, whoop, I'm dysregulated, I'm gonna pull it back right now, and to learn techniques that work for you to get re-regulated. So, I noticed that hurrying and getting overwhelmed was such a huge dysregulator for me that I, f I featured it in a major video in my dysregulation boot camp. That's this course I offer, and if you wanna see it, I'll, I'll put a link in it below. But just for now, I wanna give you some tips on how to notice when the hurrying trigger is is happening and how you can start to change that. So hurrying is a, it's a common thing that people do. It's a dysregulator, but it's also just common. It's everything from trying to get out the door in the morning to driving in a rushed way, you know, through traffic, just, oh, gotta get there, gotta get there. Um, or just getting overwhelmed with everything that you're trying to get done in a day. It, it can definitely strike when you're um, helping kids or working with other people, um, multitasking, all that stuff. You, you know, you start to hurry. It's, it, it is a very normal thing that we do. And here's the thing, most hurrying comes not because of society, not because of technology, which some people might say, but it's from something more ordinary than that. And are you ready? The reason we have so much hurrying is procrastination. <laughs> it is, we all do it. We're not getting up out of bed after the alarm goes off, not getting out the door or leaving enough time to get where we're going. Do you do that? I do. And what's one huge reason we procrastinate? That's right, dysregulation. So it's a vicious circle, procrastinating, dysregulating, hurrying, dysregulating, procrastinating, and doing it again. So our minds go down that road easily, but our minds love a sense of spaciousness and time. So taking your time is wonderfully regulating. When is the last time that you took a shower and you stopped and you just enjoyed the feeling of the water or you brushed your teeth without a feeling of pressure to hurry up? This pushing, pushing all the time, it can overwhelm us and overwhelm all by itself triggers dysregulation. So our minds love doing things with careful attention, but the PTSD in us feels scared of slow mindful processes because the bad feelings might get in. Do you have that? There have been times when I stopped to think about why I was hurrying so much all the time, and the best I could come up with was that I felt like I was being chased by emotions. And so I, I gave a name to that feeling, and I call it feeling like I'm being chased by a pack of wolves. And funnily enough, when I sat in meditation and I imagined wolves coming and getting me, like I just let it happen, nothing terrible happened. I mean, there aren't actually wolves. It was emotion and it might come and get me and it was a feeling of usually sadness 
And at the very worst, I might have a little cry and then the feeling passes. Like it's so simple. And, and if you can let that feeling kind of wash through you, you don't have to hurry so much. You don't have to keep running. You can kind of just take things at a, at a healthy pace for you and for your mind. But for a long time I was running and I hurried and I hurried and in my kind of dysregulation, hurrying makes me start losing my keys, spilling my coffee down my shirt or in the car. So then I end up way late getting to where I'm going. And one time in a two week period where I was intensely dysregulated, I, something really bad had happened. I was really, really in my PTSD, but I drove away from the gas station with the pump still in my car. And then I also rear-ended a truck on the freeway. So talk about those brain wavy lines like a river running over rocks, you know, it's just like <sighs> it was so hard for me to stay focused enough to do one to do a sequence of things like pump the gas, take it out, put it back in its holder, screw the cap on, shut the door, get back in the car, start the car, drive away, pay attention to the cars in front of me on the freeway, the key thing. Luckily, no one was hurt, but it was a moment, it was a couple weeks in my life that made it very clear to me that something was wrong, that something was wrong. And in a way, I'm grateful for those times because nobody was hurt, because they propelled me to find out what CPTSD was. I ended up getting EMDR uh, right after that period, and it did amazing things for me because I was dysregulated by some recent traumas that had happened. So. Uh, you can learn about EMDR in some of my other videos um, on treatments. So I'll, put a, I'll, I'll be sure to put a link to that down below too so you can learn about treatments if you like. But when I'm dysregulated also, some other things I do is I'll start bumping my head. Um, I drop dishes. I'm, I'll be washing dishes and I'm not like applying pressure with my hands to them and holding them. They're just kind of slipping out, soapy dishes. And I, the worst of it is I can't get anything done. I'll, when I'm dysregulated, I'm sitting there and I start a task and then I distract and I go do something else. And they say that a lot of people who have been diagnosed with ADHD, once their practitioner knows about CPTSD, sometimes that may be what it is, that it mimics ADHD because of that difficulty paying attention and focusing. So the difference is with CPTSD, you can learn to re-regulate, come right back and do things one at a time. I use, I use a little task calendar called a Kanban flow board. I love it. And I tell you, I should get kickbacks because I always talk about this. There's a lot of Kanban tools, K-A-N-B-A-N. And I write my tasks there and I color code them and I pay attention to this list like in the morning, in the evening, sometimes throughout the day I delete things I complete. My mind loves to stay on task. It loves order and in fact order begets order. So the more I kind of work in a structured fashion, the less dysregulated I get. And so then more time opens up in my day to continue to have creative thoughts or um, to be in touch with myself or, or, or to be clear, like I need a, I need a um, cup of tea right now. I'm really thirsty. Cause all that stuff just, you know, when I'm dysregulated, I'm, I'm not in touch with myself. So the irony about hurrying is it just ends up making everything take longer. So you do have time to slow down. If you are from the United States, you will remember the kids show Mr. Rogers. And I've been talking about this again lately. I talked about it in the course on dysregulation, but I was talking about Mr. Rogers again for people um, from Australia and Europe who were on the call I was on. And he is one of the heroes in my pantheon of people who helped me survive my childhood with my spirit intact. And there's this beautiful documentary that came out a few years ago called Won't You Be My Neighbor? And I highly recommend it. It was really neat for me to see that the way that he was wonderful for me was intentional, that he saw himself as sort of having a ministry to help kids who were struggling. And it worked. <laughs> it worked for me. Um, there's also a movie, a dramatic movie about him where Tom Hanks plays him and that's called, uh, I think, Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood. And I loved that movie just as much. <laughs> I cried. It was really nice. What a good person. Um, my grandmother, who cared for me after preschool every afternoon when I was like four years old, she used to let me watch Mr. Rogers, but she wouldn't let me watch other TV shows because she said that most TV shows were too, I don't know what she said at the time, but what I 
I remember what she meant, and it was that they were fren frenetic. And when I watched cartoons and things, just like regular old Bugs Bunny, it got me wound up. And definitely when I was four, she knew that I was going through trauma at home. She knew. And I was terrified of really silly things like dripping faucets. I was completely like, you know, if a faucet had drips coming out of it, I would go into absolute panic that the whole house was going to fill up with water. Or the other thing is, and we lived, you know, we lived in the San Francisco Bay Area, and in San Francisco there's very steep hills, and sometimes when you're a little kid in the back of a car, and a car's going up the hill, you can't see what's on the other side. And it's not until you're totally going down the hill that you can see that it's a hill, it's not a cliff. And I would just absolutely be freaking out in the back seat that we were about to go over a cliff. And when I think about that now, I just feel really sad. You know, I feel really sad that I thought that my parents would ever just like intentionally drive us over a cliff. So yeah, my grandmother knew and she let me watch Mr. Rogers and he would start each episode by walking into this fake, you know, it was like a set, it was a TV set, but it was his home and he would come in the door and he'd say hello and he would sing the song that he always sang when he was coming in the door and he would walk over to the closet and he'd open the closet and he would take off his sport coat and he'd put it on a hanger and then he would take out his sweater. It was like a cardigan sweater that he wore. I think it's in the Smithsonian now. <laughs> and he'd put that on. He always had like a shirt and tie. He was like a proper 60s dude. Put on his sweater. Then he'd take his, uh, a pair of sneakers out, like Keds, out of the closet and he'd go sit down on the sofa and he'd take off his leather shoes and he'd put on his, his sneakers and he'd tie them and he'd sometimes have a little commentary, I'm going to tie my shoe, I'm going to tie that one, I'm going to tie that one. And it was totally mesmerizing and it, was, it would just give me such utter peace inside to watch him do these tasks slowly and carefully and the camera would give you this close-up view of each shoe while he tied it so you might learn a little bit about like how to tie a shoe and he made that show because he knew that a lot of kids were going through trauma and this is what he did he hung out with us for half an hour each day and um, and he says in the documentary you know he was trying to like make you feel seen and validated and he did. It's a great show to watch if you just want to know like how to be with kids too. How do you make a kid feel seen and validated like that? So you may have people who you loved during your own childhood, who you loved exactly because they helped you to learn to move at the right pace for your brain. Like we don't really give thanks for that very often, but there are some people who help you move at the right pace for your brain and those people are very comforting to be around. And a lot of people use mindfulness meditation to sort of tune in and drop back into their bodies and slowly and mindfully pay attention to what's happening around them. And this is really powerful for CPTSD if, if you can manage it and that's something I, a lot of the leaders in the trauma movement recommend mindfulness meditation along with some other things. I do a different form of meditation but even if all you can do is just catch yourself when you're hurrying and go, woo, I'm hurrying, I'm feeling really stressed right now, I'm getting overwhelmed, and then drop down just temporarily to half speed. Like you might only need to go at half speed to just finish getting something out of the drawer and shutting the drawer. But just doing it slowly so you're not just banging around and clanking your hands into things. Just slowing it down to half speed, you can kind of, it can sort of send a signal back to your brain to re-regulate, get you out of that dysregulation and back into a regulated state. So if you can learn to do this around hurrying or anything that gets you dysregulated and frustrated, if you can change your dysregulation, you can change the course of your whole life. It's the dysregulation that's at the, that's at the root of so many childhood PTSD symptoms, including the health problems, including the cognitive problems, including a, a huge array of health problems. Learning to re-regulate is the number one thing you can do to start healing all these other aspects of your trauma. So if you want to get better at learning re-regulation, here's a video where you can learn and practice some concrete techniques. So I'm proud of you. I hope you check it out.